This is Magistrate Diane Crookham Johnson. Today's hearing will be digitally recorded because we are using an interpreter for today's proceedings. We are in the Powashik County Magistrate District Courtroom in case number FECR 010822, State of Iowa v. Christian Behane Rivera. Appearing in court today are Assistant Attorney General Scott Brown for the State of Iowa, County Attorney Bart Claver for the State of Iowa. Sir, are you Mr. Christian Behana Rivera? Yes. The defendant appears personally. His defendant's attorney, Alan Richards, for the defendant is in the courtroom. And Anna Runyon, a Class A Spanish language interpreter, is present in the courtroom. In addition, at the defense table, is a privately retained interpreter to be used for conversations between the defense attorney and his client. Mr. Rivera, are you able to understand today's proceedings through the interpreter? Yes. The defense has filed a motion for a private hearing the defense has also filed a resistance to the use of the expanded media. We'll hear arguments on that motion first. Mr. Richards. May it please the court, uh, Mr. Prosecutor. I pulled a case law this morning from the Iowa Court of Appeals. And it's State versus Jack Hayes filed October 3rd, 2012. It's number 2-701 slash 11-0669. There's a little piece in that case that talks about expanded media coverage. This particular court, the certain court there granted the expanded coverage, but the Supreme Court concluded that it's within the discretion of the judge to exclude the expanded media coverage based on circumstances of the particular proceeding, such coverage would materially interfere with the rights of the parties for a fair trial. And it's based on constitutional rights. And essentially, the prejudice here is the decision beforehand to lean in favor of one side or the other which prevents justice. In this particular case, the coverage that's out there is leaning all one way. And in fact, the government has weighed in at the highest levels of a predisposition that this young man, Christian, is guilty. But in our system of justice, he's entitled to that presumption of innocence until some evidence is presented. At this time, there's been no evidence presented, Your Honor. And so we're urging the court to prevent the cameras from coming in here, which possibly could show some sort of bias or prejudice and get it into this political controversy of portraying Christian as something that he isn't. In some ways, I view this as a political payback for what's swirling around in terms of the, of the media. And the media is feeding into it. They have not made efforts, as far as I can see, to give justice or any type of leaning towards this presumption of innocence. And therefore, we're asking this court to uh, exclude the media uh, from these proceedings because it could be just one nod of the head, one glance, one sleight of hand that will be partially taken out of context and presented over and over, uh, which would be highly prejudicial to the defendant. So I urge the court to exclude the media from these proceedings. Thank you. Mr. Brown, would you like to make an argument? Yes, Judge. Um, we have, first of all, the state has no objection to the expanded media request that's been filed. Uh, I think they follow proper procedure here. Uh, Mr. Grove, I think, is the uh, regional media coordinator. Um, it's very, 
routine in cases that garner some sort of high profile that the media has interest. Uh, the Supreme Court has provided rules uh, for the court to follow in um, allowing uh, media coverage of cases and court proceedings. So we would have no objection to the expanded media request. There's been one request for a video camera, one request for a still camera, uh, again, which is very usual. Uh, under the circumstances of cases um, like this. Um, this is certainly not the only high profile case or case that has garnered media attention in the state of Iowa. So we have no objection to the media, uh, expanded media request in this case. I would assume that once this case proceeds beyond initial appearance, uh, whoever the district court judge that is assigned to this case um, will probably readdress uh, that issue. Um, secondly, there's been a motion filed, I just got this whenever I walked in this, uh, this afternoon, but a motion for private hearing pursuant to Iowa Rule of Criminal Procedure 2.24. I think that's what uh, Mr. Richards here was uh, referencing whenever he was arguing that there's a substantial uh, probability that the defendant's right to a fair trial will be prejudiced by the publicity that closure of this particular proceeding would prevent. He has not identified anything that would happen today in this particular hearing uh, that would create any type of substantial probability that his fair trial would be impacted. Um, he wants to talk about whatever the political discourse is that's been surrounding this charge or this case. Certainly we have no control over that. Um, but it is what it is at this point. I mean, there's a lot of information that's out there about this case, about this particular charge. Um, I think all the court is going to do is follow uh, Rule 2.2 in the initial appearance, advising him of uh, his rights, uh, making sure he's got counsel, that he's either retained or appointed, and addressing the issue of a, a preliminary hearing and whether or not he demands that. I, I fail to see how any uh, substantial probability uh, of, of uh, any impact on the defendant's fair trial would be uh, raised in this particular uh, proceeding. So we would ask that the motion for private hearing be denied and that the expanded media request be granted. Thank you. If, if I may respond, Your Honor. Briefly. Uh, procedures weren't followed. I entered my appearance this morning at attempted to after, shortly after 8 a.m. The e-file system was, was down or crashed. I did not see the motion for expanded media coverage until 12 o'clock today. And if that motion was filed yesterday, Christian was still self-represented. He was never served a copy of that notice, and I was never received a physical copy, although I do acknowledge I did see it at 12 o'clock today. It was my first opportunity, first knowledge that the e-file system was back up. So the rules haven't been complied with, and I would object on the rules, being the prosecutor says the rules were followed. They were not followed. Mr. Richards, I'm aware of the fact that we had technical difficulties this morning with the e-filing system that the Iowa judicial system uses. Because I was aware of that, I made contact with both you and Mr. Brown, notified each of you of the expanded media coverage first thing this morning explained the difficulties we were having in making the paper copies available to you and said that as soon as you arrived at the courthouse we would make everything available to you if EDMS was not available at that time. I believe we've followed the procedures that are available to us and we have gone out of our way to make sure that while we were having technical difficulties throughout the state that we were making you aware of things that were being filed in fact, we allowed you to file an early appearance by fax, which would not be a normal procedure because EDMS was down also. So you did take advantage of the fact that the court was working with you and trying to accommodate for the technical difficulties we're having. At this time, I'm going to rule on the uh, motion for a private hearing and also the request for expanded media coverage. with a reminder to everyone that the defendant will not be asked to make any statements related to facts in this case today i make the fi following finding the defendant's right to a fair trial is not prejudiced by the publicity as related to the initial appearance reasonable alternatives have been established including limiting media coverage to one video camera and one still camera 
Today's initial appearance will be held in open court and the media will be allowed to stay in the courtroom. Mr. Richards, you also filed a motion for a gag order and in discussions that were held off the record prior to today's hearing, you indicated that you intended for that gag order to be heard by a district court judge. Is that still your intent? I believe that's the proper procedure, Your Honor. Okay. I will um, file a calendar entry asking the district court to set that for hearing. We are now going to move on to the initial appearance. Mr. Rivera, this is your initial appearance on the charge of murder in the first degree and on an immigration detainer notice of action filed by the Department of Homeland Security. The purpose of an initial appearance is to make sure you understand the charges against you, to review any request for an appointment of an attorney, to set further proceedings or court dates in this matter, and to discuss your terms of release from jail. Mr. Rivera, do you have any questions about the things we'll be covering today? No. Okay. Mr. Rivera, you have been charged with murder in the first degree in violation of Iowa Code Section 707.2 sub 1 sub A, a Class A felony. Mr. Rivera, have you been given copy of this paperwork? Uh, yes. The Department of Homeland Security has filed an immigration detainer notice of action for you. Mr. Rivera, have you received a copy of this paperwork? I believe so. Mr. Rivera, I'm now going to review rights that every defendant has in a criminal action. These include the following. You have the right to an attorney. Every defendant has the right to retain legal counsel and shall be allowed reasonable time and opportunity to consult an attorney. In the event you are indigent and desire counsel, and if the offense is a serious misdemeanor or greater, an attorney can be appointed to represent you. Mr. Rivera, at this time you are represented by a privately retained attorney, Alan Richards. Do you wish to continue with this private representation or do you wish to file an application for a court appointed attorney? Uh, no, with Richard. Mr. Rivera, if at any time today, during today's proceedings, you wish to talk to your attorney, please let me know and I'll stop today's hearing. Okay. Next, you have the right to be released from custody. Every defendant in custody has the right, subject to conditions, to be released from custody pending judgment. A defendant may be released from custody on his or her own personal recognizance or on conditions as the court determines as will reasonably assure the defendant's appearance as required and will reasonably assure the public's safety. If the court imposes conditions for defendant's release and defendant is unable to meet these conditions, the defendant has the right to request a bond review hearing. If the defendant is indigent and unable to retain legal counsel, the court will appoint an attorney to represent you for the purposes of this bond review hearing. Next, you have the right against self-incrimination. A defendant is not required to make any statement concerning the offense charged to the court, to any law enforcement officer, or to any other person. But if the defendant makes any such statements, those statements can be used against the defendant. And finally, defendants have a right to trial. Every defendant has the right to a trial and to be tried by a jury if requested. At such trial, defendant has the right to assistance of counsel, the right to confront and cross-examine witnesses against him, the right not to be compelled to incriminate himself, and the right to subpoena the attendance of any witness on your behalf. Mr. Rivera, do you have any questions about the rights I've just gone through? No. Next, we're going to discuss the next steps in your case. The next step would be a preliminary hearing. The purpose of a preliminary hearing is for the court to determine whether there is probable cause to believe that an offense has been committed and that the defendant committed it. 
A defendant charged with a public offense other than a simple misdemeanor is entitled to a preliminary hearing with two exceptions. One is if trial information is filed against the defendant by the prosecutor, or two, the defendant waives the preliminary hearing on the record. Mr. Rivera, do you wish to waive your preliminary hearing today, or do you wish to have it scheduled? I want to talk to him. To his attorney? Ah, yes, I want a hearing. Mr. Rivera, I will schedule your preliminary hearing on September 4th, 2018 at 1 p.m. Judge, may I be heard on that date? Yes. I, I realize he gets 10 days. I think 10 days would probably run on that Saturday. That's why you set it for the 4th. Correct. Um, Monday is a holiday. I understand. We have we are making plans to have the trial information and minutes done, and would anticipate having it done by the thirty first. Um, if you want to set it for that day, so we get it ahead of the holiday, that's that's what we would suggest. Um, if we need, I guess, to the fourth, we can let the court know that that our plan is to have it done by that Friday, August thirty first. If you could give us an afternoon time, that would be uh, that would be nice for us. So if we can get that done. Thanks. Mr. Richards is is an August 31st, 2018 at 2 p.m. date for the preliminary hearing acceptable to you? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Rivera, your preliminary hearing will then be set for August 31st, 2018 at 2 p.m. Mr. Rivera, I now need to review with you the maximum penalties for your charge. If found guilty of the charge of murder in the first degree, the maximum penalty will be imposed. The maximum penalty is life in prison without the possibility of parole. This sentence cannot be deferred or suspended. The defendant will be required to provide a DNA sample and may be required to register with the sex offender registry. And if not a U.S. citizen, a plea of guilty can result in additional immigration consequences up to and including deportation. The immigration detainer notice of action requires that at the completion of this criminal matter you be transferred to the Department of Homeland Security to keep complete processing and assessment of your citizenship. Mr. Rivera, do you have any questions about the penalties or requirements as listed? Mr. Rivera, we're now going to discuss the terms of your release from jail. I must now set bond in terms of your release from jail. In making these decisions, I take into account whether you will appear for future hearings if you are released and whether the public will be safe if you are released. Mr. Brown, do you wish to make any arguments on behalf of this? Just briefly, Judge, uh, yesterday whenever we um, uh, discussed this charge and authorized it. It was presented to Judge Gammon, I believe. Uh, we had no input on the bond. I noticed that she had initially set a bond amount as $1 million cash only. If I had been asked at that time what I thought the, the bond should be, I would have uh, requested a $5 million bond cash only. That's what we would request here. Uh, we think it is appropriate given the severity of the charge. Uh, his what his immigration status, at least as it's been described to me, uh, and um, the fact that what he's accused of, obviously, is a very heinous crime, and um, 
the, certainly the, the safety of the community should be foremost in the court's mind uh, whenever setting bonds. So that's what we would request that bond be set in the amount of $5 million cash only. Thank you. Mr. Richards, would you like to make any argument on bond in terms of release? Yeah, yes, Your Honor. Uh, Christian uh, is a young, young man. He's been working for a number of years for a respectable uh, person in this community. Uh, no prior criminal record. He sits here presumed innocent. Uh, there's been no evidence at all introduced to the court. Uh, and there is actually no history. Uh, when he came to this country as a minor, he had the equivalent of a seventh, maybe eighth grade education. So his understanding of these proceedings is what's going on. We are urging the court to be fair uh, to Christian with his rights, including his bond. And I have great respect for the court and your honor that you will protect those rights. And so we ask you to do that. But one of those would be setting a bond that at least somewhat may be attainable. attainable. We will uh, take a look at your ruling and, and probably ask for a review hearing on the matter regardless. Thank you. Mr. Rivera, you're not required to say anything at this appearance, but you are given the opportunity to say something. Would you like to say anything before I order the terms and conditions of your release from jail? No. Mr. Rivera, the following terms of release from jail are ordered. Bond in the amount of $5 million cash only, in the name of the defendant only, and only after approval for pretrial release by the Department of Corrections. If released, you may not leave Powsheet County, Iowa without written consent of the court. You must turn over your passport or any other travel documents issued by the United States or any other country to the Powasheet County Sheriff's Office within 24 hours of this initial appearance. You must submit to the Department of Corrections for pretrial release supervision for review, approval, and registration for participation by the department at least 48 hours prior to the release from jail. That means that if you are not accepted for supervision by the Department of Corrections, you will not be able to post bond to be released from jail. Mr. Rivera, do you have any questions about the terms and conditions that I've just listed? No. Mr. Brown, is there anything you believe the defendant should be apprised of today before I close the record? Judge, I assume there's been a probable cause finding made um, pursuant to the rule. Um, yes, there has been a probable cause finding for the charge of murder in the first degree. Okay. Uh, other than that, no, I don't have anything further. Mr. Richards, is there anything that you believe the defendant should be apprised of today before I close the record? We're, so, we're satisfied with the court's procedures today. The preliminary hearing shall be scheduled for August 31st, 2018 at 2 p.m. This closes the record.
look up.